Welcome back, and I've got an absolutely fascinating experiment to show you today. I know I always say that, but this is something really rather special. What we're going to do is we're going to pass a beam of electrons down or parallel to or almost parallel to a magnetic field line. And what's going to happen, I think, will really surprise you. And we're going to use that to explain the northern lights. So if you've seen my videos before, you'll be familiar with the electron gun and this apparatus, which has a horizontal electron gun, which produces a horizontal beam of electrons. And you'll also know that we can put Helmholtz coils on either side of the tube and have a magnetic field that goes through the tube between uh, me and the camera with the electron beam going at 90 degrees to it. But today I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass the electron beam down a magnetic field line. So to do that, what I've got to do is I've got to take the tube out of the stand and mount it, rather unusually, mount it in this direction so we can have the Helmholtz coils in front and behind the tube. So we've got the electron beam coming towards you and we've also got a magnetic field that's running parallel to that electron beam. Okay, so this is a bit of a tricky fella to set up. And you know, I've never ever seen this done. So um, let's see if we can get it to work. So I'm gonna put Helmholtz coil behind the tube there. And you need about three sets of hands to do this. And then clip the tube into its stand. That's the most important bit for me so I don't drop the tube. That's a Helmholtz coil in place. And here's the next coil. There we go. Uh, sometimes they suggest you just do it with one coil, but I want to get a uniform field right the way through the tube. So the electron gun's where I am, it's firing electrons towards you guys, towards the camera, and we're going to have a magnetic field that also runs in the direction between me and the camera, as it were. Okay, we won't worry too much about which way the magnetic field line's arrow points, but the electron beam will be parallel to the magnetic field line. So I'll just repeat the maxim from my physics teacher at school, always set stuff up in front of your students. So bear with me here. We need the heater on. So I'm gonna plug into the back of the tube here, into the heater uh, for the horizontal electron gun. Remember this has got two actually, it's got a vertical one as well. And the heater goes into 6.3 volts AC. It doesn't really matter, it's just to warm up the wire. Um, so that tungsten filament will have electrons that come off its surface. So we're going to attract the electrons off that wire. So we're going to make the anode very positive. So I'm going to connect into the anode here. I know this is all happening behind the tube. And we're going to run it at about 150 volts DC. OK, there we go. It's good that the tube swivels. We're going to use that a bit later on. And then we're going to make the back of the tube very, very negative to repel the electrons off the cathode, there we go, into the negative voltage. And that's now set up to produce a fine beam of electrons that will produce a spot on the front of the tube. So, so far so good, but we now need our magnetic field that's gonna run in a direction, sort of uh, me to the camera, or maybe the other way around. I'm not worried about the direction of the field, I'm just interested in the fact that it is parallel to the electron beam. So I'm going to come from a low voltage power supply into the first Helmholtz coil, out of it and into the one behind. And I'm trying to create a uniform field. Here we go. And then from that Helmholtz coil back to the power supply. There we go. So now, when I switch on the apparatus, if I keep it straight, uh, we've got two things happening here. We've got an electron beam coming straight towards you, and when we turn these Helmholtz coils on, we'll have a magnetic field parallel to that electron beam. 
So you might remember my setup with this when the electron gun was pointing that way. And if you remember, what happened there is the beam of electrons were deflected into a circle. So let me just remind you what was happening there. The electron beams were going in this direction, okay? Um, the uh, magnetic field was going in this direction, and at 90 degrees to that was the force due to the magnetic field, which was in this direction. So you sort of have to imagine electrons moving that way, magnetic field in this plane, and the force on them in this direction, constantly forcing them into a circle. But now we've got a really strange arrangement. We've got the electron beam coming towards you and the magnetic field in the same direction. So let's see what happens when we turn on. Okay, so let's turn it on. We'll just let it settle down just for a second. Um, the heat has come on and that's what you expect to see to begin with. You just see a horizontal electron beam producing a dot on the surface of the tube. So I just moved the camera uh, to show you the horizontal beam. Okay, and there you go. Uh, turned it back on again and there's the horizontal beam. So what we're going to do now is turn on the magnetic field and see what happens to that horizontal electron beam. Okay, so there's our horizontal electron beam. Uh, the focus goes a little bit there. And then what I'll do now is I'll turn up the magnetic field due to the Helmholtz coils. And not a great deal happens uh, because the magnetic field is parallel to the electron beam. Well, when you turn on, um, as you saw, not a lot happens, as you'd expect, because if the electron beam is parallel to the magnetic field, the magnetic field is parallel to the beam current and therefore doesn't create a force on it. So the electron beam travels unimpeded, unaffected by the magnetic field. But I'm going to do something very strange now. What I'm going to do, and I hinted to it um, to this point a bit earlier on, is I'm going to twist the tube slightly like this. In other words, I'm going to make sure that the electron beam is not exactly parallel to the magnetic field, but it has a component of velocity towards you and also a component of velocity towards the right. So if you think about it, there's a bit of velocity to the right, which is at 90 degrees to the magnetic field that's traveling in the direction between myself and the camera. So let's switch on and see what happens. But let me now just move the tube slightly to the side. And I think what you can see here is this twisting or bending of the beam. So it's not a massive effect, but if you remember, what we saw here was uh, the electron beam traveling down the tube but it formed a helix. I'm trying very hard not to say a spiral. So it formed a sort of screw thread, a helix. Now let's just think about what's happening there. The magnetic field is traveling down the tube pretty much in the same direction as the electrons are traveling. But because the tube is off axis slightly, there is a component of velocity at 90 degrees to the magnetic field. And this is the key to why you get a helical shape because the beam is traveling towards the screen on the tube, so it's got a velocity in this direction, and it will continue with that velocity, but it's also got a velocity, a component of velocity, that is at 90 degrees to the magnetic field, and therefore, the third direction at 90 degrees, it will feel a force inwards. So if you think about it, what it's trying to do is the beam is trying to travel down the tube, the magnetic field is pushing the beam back into a circle because a bit of the field has a component at 90 degrees to the beam traveling, but it's not pushed into a perfect circle because the beam also has a velocity in this direction. So your circles are sort of drawn out like that and you get these helical shapes. But now let's make it look even more impressive. So what I'm going to do is straighten up the tube. And uh, you, you'll all agree that, of course, when we turn this on now, uh, we won't get our helical beam motion. But there is a little plate in here that we can charge up and we can deflect the electron beam sideways slightly. So we can give it or impart upon it a slightly larger 
crossways component of velocity. And if we put a slightly larger component of velocity across the tube this way, then it's definitely at 90 degrees to the magnetic field, and the magnetic field will pull that again into a circle. But because there's a velocity traveling towards you as well, we get the circular shape combined with the beam moving this way, so we'll get lovely helical shape. So what I'm going to do now is turn on the fine beam tube, but what I've got now is I've connected a plate that's very positive to the side of the electron beam. And as it warms up, you'll begin to see a beam that sort of points down towards the bottom of the tube. I think you can just see it in the picture there. So that uh, beam has clearly got a horizontal velocity and a velocity that's downwards. So when I turn on the magnetic field now, there's going to be a component of velocity that is not at 90 degrees to that beam direction. And what you'll see is really interesting. So on goes our electron beam. And now I'm going to turn up the magnetic field and watch what happens to the electron beam. It's really pretty, but what you see is the electron beam curling around in a helical shape around the magnetic field line that's horizontal. So as the tube warms up there, you can see a lovely picture of the electron beam corkscrewing around the magnetic field line because part of its velocity, a component of its velocity, is at 90 degrees to the field line. So just before we finish, what's the connection between this experiment and the Northern Lights? Well, what happens in the case of the Northern Lights is that charged particles, maybe protons or what have you, come rushing towards the Earth's magnetic field and they get trapped within the Earth's magnetic field. But the Earth has magnetic field lines coming uh, into it or out of it, depending on which pole you're looking at, and the... Uh, Protons or high energy particles coming in cause ionization, uh, usually nitrogen and oxygen ions. And those ions will travel along the field line, but they again don't follow it absolutely uh, parallel, they follow it at a slight angle. And of course, we're now in the same situation that we've got a velocity that's parallel to the field line. But we've also got a component of velocity at 90 degrees to the field line and the one at 90 degrees will pull those ions into a circular path and the velocity that is parallel to the field line will cause them to move downwards perhaps in this case and so the ions will form a helical track down or at least along the field line and when electrons recombine with those ions the energy is released as photon of light and it's that that you see in the northern lights you see the photons of light given off by the ions that have been accelerated recombining with electrons. So I've turned up the magnetic field as high as I can and I'm now going to wiggle the tube around so the electron beam is at all kinds of different angles to the magnetic field. You could imagine that the beam tube stationary and the magnetic field's moving around all over the place and I hope what you feel you see here is something that looks very much like the northern lights but the gas in this case is helium. So I do hope you enjoyed that experiment. As I say, I've never seen it done before. Uh, I'm sure some schools have done it, but it was probably done years and years ago. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I'll be making another video soon, and I look forward to seeing you then.